All right, here we have the mean value theorem. And you're going to find this is similar to the Rolle's theorem, where this is an existence theorem. And actually, the Rolle's theorem is used to prove the mean value theorem. Uh, the mean value theorem states, uh, once again, if your function f is continuous on the closed interval a to b and differentiable on the open interval from a to b. And you're going to see this quite a lot with your uh, theorems and so forth throughout uh, calculus uh, because we're looking at these functions. Typically, we want them to be continuous and differentiable on the open interval. And what this states is there is going to exist a number c in the interval from a to b such that the derivative evaluated at c is equal to f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. Now, I hope the f of b minus f of a over b minus a looks familiar. And this is simply your slope formula. If you're given two points, so this is the same thing as stating y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that's just simply finding the slope. And of course, we know the derivative is the slope. So here we're saying that there is a point C on the graph where that tangent line is going to equal to the slope of the line through the point uh, from A to B. So if we look at this graphically, what does that mean? Well, we have our two points, uh, A to B. And if we have f of b minus f of a, so here we have point A to point B, f of a, f of b. So if we're looking at the line that goes through the two points from A to B, so this would be your, this point is A, f of a, and over here we have B, f of b. And what we're saying here is this is our secant line. And what the mean value theorem says is this is our mean value. In other words, mean value here, the mean stands for the average rate of change. So if we look at this uh, function we have here and we have this graph, the average rate of change from A to B would be the slope of this secant line. That's given us the average rate of change. And what the mean value theorem says is that there's going to be a point on the graph where the tangent line is equal to the slope of this secant line. And if you notice up here, I've got this point here at C, where this line, if we look at the tangent line here, it's going to be parallel, which means the rate of change of this tangent line at point C is equal to the rate of change of the secant line. So let me state that one more time. Uh, from A to B, the secant line here gives us the average rate of change. And if we look at this point C, where we have the tangent line, what we're saying is at this instant uh, point at C, the instantaneous rate of change is going to be equal to the average rate of change from A to B. So there's going to be an instantaneous rate of change somewhere in between A and B where this instantaneous rate of change at C is going to be equal to the average rate of change from A to B. So let's see if we can look at this in our example. They tell us if the mean value theorem can be applied, we want to find all values of C in the open interval from A to B such that F prime of C equals F of B minus F of A over B minus A. So what we're trying to do is we want to find the C value. So in relationship to the problem here, we want to find the value C. So at what point essentially on this graph is the instantaneous rate of change going to be equal to 
this average rate of change of the secant line. So here we have our given function x, x squared minus x minus 2. And over here I have the graph. And we're looking at the interval from negative 1 to 1. So here we're going from negative 1 to 1. And we want to know at what point is the instantaneous rate of change going to be equal to this average rate of change? Well, if we're looking at going from this point at negative 1 to positive 1, then if we were to draw a line here through these two points, we want to find at what point in this interval, so at what point in here are we going to have a tangent line, which would be the instantaneous rate of change at that point. So what value in here, if we draw a tangent line, that's going to be equal or parallel to our secant line? Now, we could look at this problem. We could guess. We could say, well, it looks like uh, possibly somewhere in here our point would be. It looks like our line might go s somewhere in this vicinity to have a parallel line. But if we want to figure this out, we first need to find the derivative of our function. So if we take our function, and to make it easier, I'm going to distribute the x. So we have x cubed minus x squared minus 2x. And if we calculate the derivative, we have 3x squared minus 2x minus 2. Okay, now, uh, unlike the Rolle's theorem, now we're not going to set this equal to 0. Okay, we're not looking for the critical number because if, if we found the critical number, we're looking for horizontal lines. So now, instead of setting this equal to 0, we want to set this equal to the slope. We want to set it equal to the slope of our secant line here. So what is the slope of this line? Well, that means we're going to have to calculate what is, if we look at the theorem, f of c. All right, now I'm going up here using this theorem. f prime of c is equal to this slope. So f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So if we look at f of b, that means we're going to use up here, we have a and b. So f of 1 minus f of negative 1 over 1 minus negative 1. So now if we evaluate this, we plug 1 into our function. So you're going to plug f of 1 into the original function here. So 1 cubed minus 1 squared minus 2 times 1. And the calculations for that would be a negative 2. And if we plug a negative 1 in, we're going to end up with 0 over 1 minus a negative 1, which is 2. So this turns out to be equal to negative 2 over 2 is a negative 1. So this is what we want to set our derivative equal to. We have a negative 1, so that tells us the slope of this line here is a negative 1. And if we're looking for the tangent line, we also want that to have a slope of a negative 1. So if we solve now, we have 3x squared minus 2x. Add the 1 over, so that becomes minus 1. We set this equal to 0, so now we can factor. So 3x squared, we would have 3x times x, and 1 times 1. And it looks like here we're going to need a positive 1 and a negative 1. And if we set each of these equal to 0, 3x plus 1 equals 0, x minus 1 equals 0. Solving for x, we have x is a negative 1 third and x equals a positive 1.
Now, if we look closely, our interval is going from negative 1 to 1. Now, keep in mind, if we look at our theorem up here, it states that we're looking at the, there exists a number C in this open interval. Okay, so once again, notice here, this is in the open interval from A to B. Even though their initial points here is closed, we're looking at the open interval from negative 1 to 1. And we ended up with 1 here. 1 is not in the open interval. So at this point, we can ignore the value of 1 because 1 is right here at the end point. We're looking for the C value that's in between the interval. So for us, we're going to use the negative 1 third. So we could go over here to the graph and we could kind of estimate where this would be. So once again, the negative 1 third here, this is our C value that we're talking about. So it looks like maybe a negative 1 third would be right about here maybe. So if this is our negative 1 third, and if I draw the tangent line here, we can see it is going to be parallel. So in other words, this here is also going to have a slope of negative 1. So what this tells us at this negative 1 third here, at this point, the instantaneous rate of change at a negative 1 third is negative 1. And that's equal to the average rate of change from negative 1 to positive 1. So that simply means the slope of the secant line in blue is equal to the slope of the tangent line in red. So we're saying there exists this instantaneous rate of change is equal to the average rate of change from negative 1 to positive 1. All right, here we have one more example to look at, and we want to do the exact same thing. Uh, once again, I have already graphed the function over here, x plus 1 over x. And first of all, you may look and say, wait a second, this function is not continuous, but it is continuous on the interval of 1 half to 2. So here we have 1 half to 2. So this is our interval here from 1 half to a positive 2. Now, once again, if I draw the line here through these two points, if we can draw a straight line, this would be the average rate of change. Okay, We want to find, once again, within this interval, where are we going to have a point that is going to be parallel? The tangent line is going to be parallel to this secant line. And again, we could guess in somewhere right in here, if I draw a line, it's going to be parallel. So it looks like right in here somewhere. So how can we find exactly where that point's going to be? Well, once again, <clears throat> We need to find the derivative. So if we take our derivative here, f prime of x. Here we're going to use the quotient rule. So that's the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. So we end up with x minus x minus 1 over x squared. So now, what are we going to set this equal to? Here's our derivative. Once again, we're going to set this equal to our f of b minus f of a over b minus a. 
So for us, f of b, that's going to be f of 2 minus our a value, which is 1 half, divided by 2 minus a half. Okay, and if we go through the calculations here with the f of b minus f of a, this is going to turn out to be equal to 1.5 minus 3 over 1.5 and your answer is a negative 1. So that means up here we want to take our derivative if the slope of this line here is a negative 1. In other words, that's the average rate of change. We're going to set the derivative equal to negative 1 and then we're going to solve for what x value is going to give us a slope of negative 1 and then we will know where we have our tangent line. Now of course here if we go to solve this x minus x uh, of course this is going to cancel so we're, le we're left with negative 1 over x squared equals negative 1 and if we multiply here by the x squared we have a negative x squared equals negative 1 so if we move the x squared over, we get a positive x squared equals a positive 1. Take the square root of both sides and keep in mind that means we need to take plus or minus. So x is equal to a positive or negative 1. Now, before we go too far here, let's look at the interval. Our interval, once again, is 1 half to 2. So that means we can eliminate the negative 1. So up here, the negative 1 is not in the interval. So for us, that means we're going to use x equals 1 is going to be our c value. So if we go to our graph, we can kind of verify this. At 1, here's our point. And if we draw the tangent line through this point, we can see that it's going to be parallel to the secant line. So that means the instantaneous rate of change at 1 is equal to the average rate of change from 1 half to 2.